Hey guys, Doc. Backlapping a McLean reel mower is what I'm going to do today. I promised I would put this up because I didn't have room for it in another video. So if you have a McLean, you're going to want to watch it. If your boss is pissing you off and you just want to watch a video instead of working, watch this one. If you like the video, hit like. If you hate it, hit the hate button. We installed a new hate button for you uh, Doc haters out there. <laughs> I really don't care. <laughs> I'm too old, man. I just don't care. Whether, whether you like it or not, I'm just here to make a video. Uh, in the description below, I'm going to put a link. That link takes you to this exact model, which is a GR with a groove roller. There's only one place you can get this. You cannot go to any other distributor and get this actual exact unit. It includes about $200 shipping, but it includes the front groove rear roll, reel molar. It's the GR series. It cuts between three quarters of an inch and about an inch and three quarters. Um, also, a lot of you guys asking about pre-emergent, the pre-emergent is back in stock. I'll put all the links to stuff down on that page and the information down there. So all I did was basically just set this camera up in the garage because I had to backlap a real mower. This is not an entertaining video. This is for, especially for people that have a McLean and are, ta and are looking at the, the fine tuning aspect of it. Also, if you have a true cut, um, which also uses that same sort of balancing system, it also applies to a true cut too, one side versus the other side. Um, that's about it. So uh, here we go. Howdy, back lapping your real mower. I've got two days of footage of this and I have no idea how I'm gonna put this together. <laughs> so here we go. First of all, my rules about a real mower are pretty simple. Um, I really don't care what size lawn you have, 25 inch is the smallest I will buy. I've used a lot of smaller ones and I don't like the way they cut. The bumpier the lawn you're is and the wider you should go to compensate for the bumps. That's what I found. A 25 inch works great on any size lawn um, and I will not buy from smaller than a 25, period. Will not do it. <laughs> so. Uh, 25, 27, or 30. The brand that you choose. Uh, a lot of this is gonna have to do with price, but I also think being able to work on the unit hands-on is really important. So can you replace the bed knife yourself? Can you replace um, um, a ball bearing system yourself? That stuff is really important to me. I don't wanna have to send this off somewhere that's, you know, halfway across the country to get it worked on. I want to be able to work on it myself. I am not in, I am not a mechanic. And so if I get a real complex piece of equipment, I'm taking it into the shop. I'm not doing it myself necessarily. So that's why I like this unit. I've gotten to the point where I could basically strip this whole thing down and put it back together. It's not that complex once you start working with it. I'm also not afraid to work with this thing. Um, I've abused these things. So anyways, I'm going to link to the description below. This is the GR series, which is the one that I recommend to everyone. This one will cut roughly three quarters of an inch up to about an inch and three quarters. And that's about the sweet spot for Bermuda lawns and warm season lawns. Um, if you have tall grass, you really should be using a real motor, to be honest. Um, tall grass, you want some kind of rotary system, either a push or a rider or something. Real mowers are designed for short cutting grass. Uh, they do make, if by some chance you have super, super small, short Bermuda, they make a GK series, which is the Green Keeper, which is what I have. Um, I have I have those as well too, but this is the GR. This is simply just a, a lever just to adjust the height. So how do you back lap this? It's pretty simple. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two I'm going to take two screws off here, take off the chain, and then I'm going to take the chain off. Let me also make this point that a lot of real mowers, True Cuts, McLean's, they sell a backlapping kit, which you can attach to this um, to use the power of a real mower. I never sharpen a real mower blade with the power of the unit. I think it's too dangerous. Uh, you might engage the unit with a roller. Too many crazy things can happen. So my recommendation is, is you always use some kind of manual drill system. You have better control, it's a lot safer. Okay, next thing is, 
Um, I've had a couple people talk about on this unit the chain tension because there isn't uh, true cuts have a chain um, tension adapter. These don't. But what you'll notice if you ever have get into a situation where the chain is too tight, all you have to do is loosen up all your real all your blade adjustments so your blade is kind of floating, and then just spin it a little bit. And what you'll find is you'll hit a point where that chain loosens up. That took me a while to figure out. That sounds stupid, but it took me a while. So there's a certain point that that chain is loose. Also, if you'll keep, if you'll put your chain back together or take it apart, putting it back together is the hard part. If you'll put it back together before you lock down your reel while your reel is floating, um, that'll make it easier because then you'll have some slack. So remember, if you have trouble getting your chain back on because it's too tight, make sure your reel is floating, everything is loose on your reel, spin it around a little bit and find the slack point. Taps right off. And then my recommendation is, is you use this as your holding tray. Put all your parts into there. This link will come right apart. And then you could hit that chain um, with just some regular motor oil. You don't have to grease this, just hit it with regular motor oil. Okay, so the factory says that you're not supposed to loosen this third bolt back here. This is something I kind of a, a disagree with because you don't get a lot of good free movement. So what I've learned is to actually loosen that third one. If you will loosen that third one slightly, one there, and then this one right here. Now, what you'll notice is when you loosen all three of those, this actual blade will float up and down. And it floats freely. Okay, so <coughs> this bolt, this bolt, and this is the one that you're technically not supposed to loosen. I loosen all three. And basically what you're looking at is you're looking at these three bolts. So this is what they call a pork chop. And this is a fully enclosed ball bearing system, which is why I like the McLean's. You don't have to grease them. And this pork chop, this plate, is sitting on the side of your McLean over here. And that's what your reel spins on. It's a simple design. If you ever need to replace it, you can. You cannot do that with other reel mowers. So as you, as you can see, this side piece here, my reel is floating freely right now. If I don't loosen all three, it's not going to do that. Now what's going to happen when I do this is if, I, if I'm back lapping, my blade is going to rest nice and smoothly, freely on its own, all the way across that bed knife. So that's tip number one. All right, wear safety glasses when you do this. I can't wear them right now because I can't see my lens because it's polarized. So I'm going to do this without my safety glasses. But wear safety glasses because you're basically putting a pumice on this blade. Now this is 80 grit and I'm just going to go all the way across my blades. Every single, I want to make sure I get the corners. You don't have to get it completely covered, but get it pretty much on there and all of them. I will put a link to this tool. If you have a true cut, there's a bolt here. If you have a McLean, you have to have one of these. The next thing I do is I 
these, a lot of these bolts are very, very loose and I sort of just hand tighten them. So I'm just going to make sure that they're all hand tightened at this point. Hand tightening these will keep that blade from floating too much. So now it's a little bit firmer in place. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to 120 grit. But you can see what I'm doing. So I start this blade off and it's very floppy and it's just it's just following naturally following the blade following the bed knife bed knife and then what I do is I take some of that freedom out of there and it puts more of a concentrated grind on it and so if you have any unevenness in your blades this will also work on some of that unevenness now this is great stuff this is a really thick paste these other ones are a little bit oily Now I'm just going to take a hose and I'm going to rinse this off and then I'll adjust the bed knife to reel, which is one of the big points that people ask about. Okay, so this is one of the sticking points that a lot of people run into and that is the reel to bed knife adjustment. On a true cut, they have these weird round cylinders and you have to use this tool, which is kind of stupid because the way that they have those rollers <laughs> you can't access it on one side. It's like you have to completely tip over the mower to get this tool in there. This tool I think should really be whatever, better design. Um, but on, on the McLean, again, because of simplicity, you know, this isn't a $6,000 reel. If you're gonna go buy a, a 25 inch or wider reel mower, keeping 25 inch or wider, you're going to end up spending $4,500 to $9,000 unless you go with something like this, like a McLean. So this is the pork chops on the side, and this floats pretty much, and that's where you don't, you don't have to use a hammer to tap it. The reason why you might want to tap those end pieces is for fine-tuning adjustments. It'll freely move up and down as long as you have your bolts adjusted. So what I've learned how to do this is um, you might have one side that wants to tap. In other words, the bed knife. So the bed knife is here. And as that reel comes down, it, that corner might want to catch here. So what you do is you figure out if you have a problem side, always tighten your problem side first and make sure it's flowing freely and then put more pressure on the other side. So. The blade is sounding really good here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually loop them back up so that it's free floating, totally free, free floating. And I have a nice, a nice sounding edge. So I found, I don't know why, but I've found that my right side for some reason gives me a little issue here. So I'm going to tighten the center one first. So I'm going to tighten this center bolt first. After I tighten it, I check, and this is what this is what you want to do. Okay, now I'm going to warn you. These blades are just like a kitchen knife. Matter of fact, I'll zoom in. I'll zoom in. I've got a piece of footage I'll put up, and but these things are beautifully sharpened all the way across. And I have, there's a scar on the end of my finger <laughs> where I took a paper towel to clean it off and went right through the paper towel and cut my finger open. So be careful. Now they're sharp. So little adjustment at a time. Now I'm, I'm going in the direction of the cut. blown this off as best I could because it's raining outside kind of drying it so that's good so now I'm just going to take out hand tighten hand tighten now I'm going to tighten this other center bolt here okay so now if you notice I no longer have a free float that's where the tapping comes in 
So you're fine tuning because you've locked in because you've locked in this third bolt here now it's not free floating got it so once you lock this in to make an adjustment it's only going to do extremely fine adjustments so if you have to do a big adjustment you need to kind of loosen this more but this is where we come down to the fine tuning so this is locked into place and these two have a slot where you can move up and down but the only way to move them because you've locked in that third bolt is to gently just tap hope you understand that so now you're going to need your paper and this is why you want dry blades by the way and my wife gets pissed off at me because she comes home and has to pick up paper all the time I have little blocks I lift this up I put my blocks under here it makes it easier and now I'm going to check my cut over here cut I am cutting, so I am going to lock this side gently in place. And then I'm going to test my cut again. Okay, I'm not perfectly cutting, but I am cutting. I'm going to go over to the edge of the bed knife and make sure that one of the blades is sitting on the bed knife. And I'm going to tap it. And then I'm going to put pressure here. So understand what I've done. I've kind of counterbalanced. Lock in, lock in over here and then push the entire blade down. Make sense? That's locked in place. So as I move this down, the whole blade's going to move down. That's why that side doesn't have to be cutting perfectly when I first do my first adjustment. I'm going to come over here. Cut. So I have a cut here. I'm going to lock in this. That's about what I found on the McLean's that we're looking for. There's a little bit of tension. It's a big wide blade. You're never going to be perfectly balanced on a 25 or 27 or 30 inch blade. If I'm having a decent cut, I've got a decent cut over here, a decent cut over here, eh, okay cut here. Here's a little tip for you. There's blade and bed knife contact all the way across. And as you run this mower, the blade is going to get hot. What happens to metal when it heats up? It expands. So. You've got a cold blade and a cold bed knife, and you've got a super thin piece of paper. If you get a halfway decent cut, stop. Stop right there. Um, I don't want to see a whole bunch of excess pressure on this blade. Uh, when it heats up, it'll still cut. Go out and test cut it. I guarantee you, even though you might have uh, not a perfect cut in the middle, it'll still cut grass perfectly. So I've got not a lot of excess pressure here. Um, it's all set to go. All my sides, everything's locked in. And now I can put my chain back on. Okay, so let me show you this trick. Take a small sandwich bag. Put your chain inside your small sandwich bag. Take some regular motor oil. Pour it into the bag and just basically just massage it so that motor oil gets into inside of that chain pull it off. But you can see, look how nasty, look how nasty that gets. And it's just full of gunk and nastiness. Who else is texting me? Alright. So let me take the chain out with my paper towel. So see what came off my chain? See that? It's nasty. That's a good little trick on any chain you have. 
but your chain will basically come out almost looking like new but you can see a little bit of rust on that chain because I was a dummy and put it away wet but now you've got a nice clean almost brand new chain okay so now now I'm just going to put this back on I like to put it on from the bottom to the top Thank God, it went on easy. That came off the chain. Take your screwdriver. Tap it like that, that goes right on. This piece goes like this. So she's all ready to go and ready to cut. Um, any other tips? Uh, the only other tip I will give you about the McLean is up on the throttle assembly here. If your throttle lever doesn't stay, you can actually tighten the bolt on that throttle lever. Um, you can tighten it up so it's harder to push up and down. I found that works out. There's a little bolt up here on the throttle lever and you can tighten that down. But really, that's pretty much it. There's no maintenance to them. Unlike a true cut that I have to grease almost every single time. Okay, so you can probably hear the real mower in the background, and let me explain what I'm doing. Uh, it was raining almost all night long. The grass is really wet, but I've got to cut barbs. I just put down growth regulator, and it hasn't kicked in yesterday. And if I don't get this cut, we're going to rain today and rain tomorrow. This grass is going to be way out of control. So I'm doing something you shouldn't do. Soaking wet ground, wet Bermuda grass, really thick, and I'm cutting it. I'm having my son cutting it. He's the real mower virgin today. Uh, I'm having him cut this and I'm actually having him double cut it so he goes up back and then goes again It's just so thick, but I want you to see what a really sharp blade will do. It'll handle this. No problem and It's just way too thick out here So that's his second pass so he's gone here once, here once, he's already cut this twice. So the reason why we're double cutting is because the real roller is sitting on top of really thick grass. And so you go and cut once and you come back and cut again and you'll actually see a lot of grass being cut the second time. Down here, it's gonna be really thick. Now this is this, oh no, he's actually doing it. He's doing it different than I told him to, that's all right. the second cut and he's still cutting because the real roller is now dropping down a little bit so a lot of people ask why I don't use the catch basket on this thing because I don't want to waste time I don't it's I would have to empty that catcher every single pack I'd rather wait get my John Deere and pick this up with John Deere in 10 minutes we'd have to add, empty that front catcher almost every single pack If you follow me at all, you'll understand what's been going on with Barb's Lawn. I'm going to put this in a separate video, I think, because it's so amazing. For the past four to six weeks, we've been dealing, fixing her grub damage over here. Um, putting down the double kill really heavy, finding thousands of black African beetles and tons of grubs. Um, then what we came over, PGF Complete, real heavy, Humichar, real heavy, uh, and we've gotten some good rains and I got to tell you this is the honest to God's truth if we were to hold a contest on best lawn in the neighborhood right now Barb's lawn would win of course I have scalp mine and it's regrowing <laughs> I'm gonna show you this this is crazy now 
It rained last night and it rained this morning. I had my son come out with the newly sharpened McLean and cut it and cut it twice. He double cut it. We had to stop because it rained again in the middle of the cut. And then once it stopped raining, we came out and cut again. That's the beauty about a lightweight McLean mower. You can cut while your ground is soggy. That's the beauty of it. Let me show you what her lawn looks like. Is that just amazing or what? And her entire, now she just got home from her vacation. And it is stunning. <laughs> I mean stunning. I'm shocked. Look at this. That is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now hers is probably about an inch and a quarter, somewhere around there. But that is a double cut wet grass. Absolutely gorgeous. PGF complete, human char and the growth regulator. Just the growth regulator just put down.